Yep. Okay. What's up, Chaz? Bryson? Mr. Matthew Scott. I did confirm with Coach Fender he will be joining us. Okay. What's up, gentlemen? There's Coach Bender. How's it going? Guys, populate. Guys, set your cameras up, hold them horizontal, and sit up straight. Sound like a broken record there, Wetmore. Hey, I like to say things once as long as they listen the first time. As coach. Hey, Coach Bender, how you doing? Look at that Maryland jersey sitting up behind him. Isn't that pretty? See, I thought it was Bellarmine. <laughs> <laughs> At least it's not Emmaus. There you go. Yeah, that's a start. <laughs> How's everybody doing? Good, good. How you doing, Mike? Good. We're gonna give everybody a, a minute or two to jump in here. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. It's good to see all the faces here. Colin, uh, do me a favor, put on your uh, camera. There we go. Thank you, Colin. Set your camera up and sit up straight there, young man. And Nolan and Lincoln do the same thing. Although, Lincoln, it looks like you've got a dead dog on your screen. <laughs> My camera it just failed the start. <clears throat> so, again, we'll give folks another minute to join. And I'm going to mute everybody, Kevin, except for the coaches and Coach Bender. And then uh, if everybody can set their <clears throat> thing up to speaker view, that's in the top right. You click speaker view, and as the coaches are talking, it'll highlight them for you guys. Got some more guys jumping in here. Boy, oh boy, right on time you are. 15 minutes late. Ryan Bender, what's up, buddy? I see the head of Johnny here. There we go. Uh, I can see up Johnny's nose. Johnny, you got about three <laughs> nose hairs in your left nostril. <laughs> Ouch. I see some boogers, too. Oh, Matt, don't go there. <laughs> we'll leave it to Matt. There's Matt. There's always the line, and then Matt goes right over it. <laughs> yep. Well, you should know how that feels. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> All right. So I see you muted everybody. Uh, Rob, you want to get started? Oh, guys, I'm just excited tonight to uh, have Coach Bender joining us. As you guys know, he's the head coach of Parkland High School. He's a director of Headstrong. He's played for the University of Maryland, recently drafted into the MLL. He's looking forward to talking to you guys about his journey, about what lacrosse has done for him, and um, – how it's become, it's emanated and permeated every part of his life. And then he's going to talk to you about what we need to be doing during this pandemic, during this quarantine. So we are not gathering dust on ourselves and our sticks. But uh, after, uh, Kevin, do you have anything to say before we, we turn? No, I, to the well, coach? but yeah, thank you, Rob. Thank you, Rob. I, I, uh, Similar to, uh, to last week, guys. So, so as you may recall, we had a great opportunity to meet with uh, Rob Pinnell last week. Um, you know, this is the second session that we're trying to set up with, uh, with coaches and players of prominence um, that, uh, again, can, uh, can ultimately instill some, some great information uh, for you guys. Um, we're going to be setting up more over the course of this next month. I've got some calls out to Kevin Castis over at Lehigh. I've got some calls out to uh, some other coaches 
you know, from Lafayette, other places. So we will hopefully have somebody on the, on the line with us next week as well. But, you know, similar to last week, what we had asked you guys to do was think about some great questions you could ask of Coach Bender. So, you know, Mike, obviously everybody knows you from Headstrong and folks know you, you know, in terms of being the, the head coach for the Parkland team. But before we actually get into that, you know, I wanted to start with a couple of questions, maybe in terms of your youth playing experience. So, you know, our understanding is, you know, you obviously went to Emmaus and was wondering, could you tell us a little bit about, you know, when you started playing, um, you know, which organizations you played, played with, you know, if you played club, who were they with? And uh, eventually what brought you to Bellarmine and then to Maryland? So Coach Bender, you want to go? Yeah, first off, thank you coaches for, for having me. This is a pretty awesome opportunity to, to see with you guys inter, interact and see such a, such a positive attendance from, from the youth guys. Um, and it's definitely a, definitely a hard time, you know, not having, uh, not having lacrosse here in the spring. So it's, uh, it's definitely an interesting uh, time for, for really everyone in, uh, all around the world. So uh, thanks again for having me. But uh, a little bit about myself. Um, I started playing lacrosse not until like fifth or sixth grade. Um, started in the LMYA program, actually. Um, was playing football and baseball. Um, and lacrosse was necessarily a, a newer sport, um, kind of transitioned. Um, actually, one year I played baseball and lacrosse the same season because um, didn't want to uh, – my dad didn't let me, you know, commit full time to one thing yet. So, uh, so I played a baseball game and then ran over to Quarry Fields and then played another lacrosse game until, you know, I just – my passion and love for lacrosse continued to grow. Um, at that point, I was just, just an athlete uh, with a stick in my hands, started with defense. Um, and was relatively now, probably a, a, a later start than, than what some of you guys had with a stick in your hands. So you guys definitely have a huge advantage uh, getting some more experience under your belt. But um, I was, had a great opportunity to have some, some awesome coaches um, teach me the basics and, uh, you know, let my athleticism and creativity and kind of um, skill set develop underneath them and um, that's a great thing about lacrosse you can be you know unique and, and and customize your game to to really however your personality feels um, went to Emmaus um, which is crazy circumstance but uh, I'm an Emmaus graduate um, was actually had, now with all my free time I was actually looking through uh, some old newspaper articles um, and Emmaus, we, we were a club sport my freshman year. We transitioned to a varsity sport um, my freshman year. And uh, we had a great group, great class, similar to you guys um, that, that played all the way up through together. Um, you know, had some great chemistry, had some great coaches. Um, and, we tr and we created that momentum and that, uh, that brotherhood through the high school where we were actually, uh, I think, 50-0 and 0 in the Lehigh Valley. We didn't lose a game in the Lehigh Valley. Um, all four years, made it to the state playoffs, um, made it to the semifinals. Um, so I had a lot of great memories with those guys. But like I said, it was something that started all the way in the youth uh, through LMYA and like you guys, SPYA. Um, and then um, continued to play throughout college, uh, played club, got recruited. A um, little bit of a crazy situation. Don't want to go too in depth there, but. Uh, my my uh, my goal was to always play at the highest level, um, play Division One lacrosse. Um, so I ended up committing to to Towson first, and then decommitting, and then committing to Bellarmine. Uh, but all in all, my my main goal was to compete at the highest level, um, and that that for me at that opportunity arose at Bellarmine, which is Division One school in Louisville, Kentucky. I did two years there, and then transferred to the University of Maryland. Um, where I finished my career and played two years there. Um, fortunate enough, uh, while I was at University of Maryland, had a phenomenal coaching staff and, and opportunities and, and finished my career um, with two Final Four appearances in the national championship in 2015, which actually just aired on ESPN. So that was- uh, Well, yeah, I was, I was saying we were texting each other when it was <laughs> on. I, I think you probably had nightmares about Will Corrigan after those, uh, after those games. <laughs> I enjoyed watching the Hopkins game before that, um, before the Denver game. But it's, uh, it, it's pretty cool. Um, I'm very fortunate to have those opportunities. And, uh, you 
you know, being a coach now and, and knowing the game, you know, on a deeper level, watching back, you know, even the 2015 national championship, um, there's so many things that you can nitpick and uh, see it from a whole different angle. So it was uh, obviously tough to tough to lose the national championship, but um, a lot of positives come came from it, and it was definitely a learning experience. So great. No. What club team did you play for, coach? It was actually only like three club teams in Philadelphia when I was coming up through high school. It was Headstrong Dukes and I believe LB3. Um, I bounced around, um, ended up finishing with Dukes where there was, where I played with Matt Rambo, Nico Amato, uh, a handful of guys. Um, but then at that point, you know, there was only two or three Lehigh Valley guys that came, that, uh, that played club and, and made that commute to Philadelphia. But um, definitely fortunate to, to have those opportunities. And, you know, it's always been my passion to provide those same opportunities that I had um, back to the back to the players of Lehigh Valley. So now, when you were at uh, Emmaus, if I remember, you were playing LSM, right? And then, did you play? Were you recruited as an LSM, or were you rec recruited more as a D MIDI? How did that work? Yes, yeah, so I played. Uh, I played LSM really my entire career. I was, um, like I said, I was a football player. So coach was handing me a long stick and said, you know, be the athlete and run around. And you know, my stick skills weren't the best, but Developed them and um, played defense all the way up through high school. Um, LSM began to took faceoffs um, and really just was just enjoyed the game so much. Was was uh, relentless on ground balls. You know, in transition, I began to get more comfortable. So it was just natural. Um, uh, enjoyed running a lot, which which is strange. So I just. Um, that was definitely an advantage in my part. So got recruited as a defense LSM at Bellarmine. I started my freshman year as at close defense, uh, sophomore year as LSM. And then I uh, transferred uh, junior year, played LSM at Maryland behind Michael Earhart, who's actually the, uh, um, the MVP of the world games two years ago. And then um, my senior year, Opportunity arose. One of our All Americans got injured. Um, coach asked me to to play short stick, something I've never done ever in my life. Um, I said whatever the team needs, um, and I, I learned it. I didn't keep a short stick out of my hands for like the next six months. Took it to classes um, just to get comfortable with it. Um, still wasn't proficient with it um, all the way up through the national championship, but I knew the defense. Um, it was something that the team needed and uh and they supported me and gave me the the uh the skills and and resources around me put me in a good good position so awesome uh, so <clears throat> why don't we turn it over to the kids um you know, i definitely have a, a slew of questions that i can ask here mike so i could keep us occupied for an hour easily <laughs> but uh <laughs> But why don't we open it up the uh, the mics? So, guys, if if you have a question, uh, unmute your line and go ahead and ask a question of Coach Bender. Who's got a question first? All right, I'm calling on Bryson. Go ahead, Bryson. Um, what was the D1 practice like? It's a great question. Um, it's very hard, actually. Um, you had to be on time. You had to prep. You had to. Uh, a lot of the time, there was uh, there's two practices every single day. Um, you worked out in the morning with the strength coach. Um, you either did your stretches or uh, or a workout for the day with your with your position group. And then and uh, and then in the morning in the afternoon, you go to your classes. Um, you do all that stuff and you try to fit in some film. And then usually in the evening, there's a block of time that the coach uh, blocks off. Usually do film work um, for about an hour. And then we hit the field um, with, a, with a practice plan and very strict timing and, and all that stuff um, for about two hours. Um, and in those two hours, we're actually uh, talking from my experience at Maryland, uh, the practices were filmed. Um, so the next day after we would, we would review some drills and, and go through that stuff. But, um, we definitely practiced the way we played. Um, so fast, um, very competitive from the start. Um, and something that I, I reiterate to the Parkland high school guys still, um, that I got from, from colleges 
uh, keeping the practice plans very structured, um, whether it's just beginning with stick work or a stretch and then developing into, you know, ground balls or, or small groups and then finishing with, you know, a competition or a, a full field drill. Um, I definitely think having some structure there is, uh, is definitely a positive when it comes to, to developing. So Perfect. does that help? Good answer. Works for us. <laughs> it works for us. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Who's next? Matt Kelly. Go ahead, buddy. What, what is it like um, changing from deep hole to short stick? That's a great question. So uh, it's only about six, it's only about three feet difference. Um, obviously, the, on the defensive end, um, making sure that you know the, the schemes and everything is most important. Um, and at that point, it really doesn't matter what, what kind of stick you have. Um, as long as you know the schemes, you can recover, you play good one-on-one one -on -one defense, um, you know, you filter guys in the, in the right directions and low percentage shots. Like I said, really doesn't matter what short stick or long stick that you have. Um, Gameplay, there's a little bit different. Um, when you do have a short stick and you're on the defensive end, um, once you start to play those more competitive games um, like Notre Dame and North Carolina, um, they start to identify you and target you a little bit more just because you have the disadvantage of those three feet. Um, so whether those are inverts or, um, you know, re-dodging you, it's definitely, definitely harder and almost makes you feel like you have a bullseye on, uh, on your chest when you step onto the field. Um, but something at Maryland that we did, um, not so much D middies, but T middies, uh, which stands for transition middies, um, which is a little bit different to answer your question about defense and short stick. Um, when I played short stick, my responsibility was to obviously play defense, but also transition the ball to the offensive end. Um, so my shift or my role wasn't complete until that was complete. So whereas defense, I would just come off the field, or, um, you know, have limited, limited responsibilities on that end. Great. Thank you, Mike. Other questions, guys? Christian, you got a question? Now, who's got a question, guys? I got two questions when the kids are done. Go ahead, Johnny. Hey, Coach Mike. What is it like to be a, a Parkland High School head coach and a professional player? Thank you for the question, Johnny. Um, it's actually been a, a, an absolute pleasure coaching for, for Parkland. I never thought I would have the opportunity to. Obviously, being an Emmaus graduate, it was definitely tough and uh, – you know, switching colors and, uh, and <laughs> my alma mater. Um, but I enjoy it. I, I most importantly enjoy the, the culture that we're creating, the, the players and the families and, and the resources that the school has um, definitely plays in our benefit. So um, super stoked for, for what's ahead. Um, we've already kind of had a great start and, you know, we're really building something something special. So I'm ex definitely excited to see you guys in the, in the next couple of years. Um, it's definitely hard though, right? Uh, when you get to high school, it's uh, it's almost like a full-time job. There's a lot of practices. There's a lot of film. There's, there's three or four games a week. So um, I know coaches are preparing you the best they can for that. Um, and then for being a professional, um, I'll answer that question in like, two or three months um, <laughs> um, hopefully we hopefully we have an mll season um i'm training the best i can keeping a stick in my hand keeping my conditioning up so uh i'll, I'll get back to you on that great thanks mike well actually guys. one actually one related question while we're trying to cultivate some additional questions for the kids can you talk a little bit about the process to getting um drafted for the mml um, because it's, it's not just one of those things where you just put your hand up and say, you know, draft me. You have to actually go through a process to be selected for the MLL. Can you tell us a little bit about that process and, and uh, what it was like to be drafted that day? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So um, it came to a little bit of a shock, obviously, because I graduated five years ago. So I'll probably be one of the older guys on the team, not so much the oldest, but probably in the, in the middle of the level because a lot of the guys play one or two years after they graduate. Um, so every year I put my name in a player pool, um, and that, that gives you eligibility for the supplemental draft, which I was selected in. 
Um, and I, you know, I'm looking forward to a lot of those guys that are still in the MLL I played with in college. Um, so I'll just, I'm looking forward to competing them with them again. Um, and you know, I'm just doing a lot of reading, a lot of, a lot of, uh, FaceTimes and stuff with coaches trying to figure out, you know, making sure that we're on the game plan and, and obviously making sure that when we get the green light from, from the MLL that we're able to go, um, we're planning to have training camp here in like two or three weeks. Um, so obviously that's been pushed back, but, but, uh, yeah, I don't know if that answers your question, but. No, it did. It did. So, all right. So guys, I bought you some time. <laughs> Not much you guys should have some additional questions here. So any other kids? I see Matt Scott's hand going up. Why don't you go ahead, Matt Scott? Have any like role models when you were like younger? Say it a little louder, Matt. Wow. Good Did question. You have any role models when you were younger. Yeah, yeah. I had a handful of people that I looked up to whether they were professional athletes or, or family members. Um, definitely a lot of positive influences in, in my life when I was younger. Um, and I tried to, you know, associate with those guys as much as possible. One of my, one of my favorite players growing up was, uh, his name is Joel White. Um, he's an LSM for Syracuse, um, plays for Team USA. So I always try to model my game the best I could uh, around his. Um, so I was one of the guys I always looked up to. Um, and then uh, I actually did karate, sensei. So I had, uh, <laughs> I, had uh, I had my my sensei that I looked up to as well. Um, taught me a lot of life lessons that I still have today. Um, and then you know my family members. I have an older sister that I looked up to and. Um, was a positive role model as well as you know my uncle and my dad and, and a few other people but great who's next anybody else I have two questions for you coach uh, the first one you hear constantly um, how lacrosse is the fastest growing sport in America Having grown up in Bethlehem, they didn't have lacrosse until at the high school level until three, four years ago. Um, how much has the game changed from when you grew up playing it to what you see the youth kids playing today? How do you see that different? Yeah, that's a good question. Um... I mean, obviously, the game, the X's and O's are, are still similar. Um, still a few adjustments as the rules continue to change. Uh, but the game's the game. Um, the thing that I've noticed the most is really the athletes that are playing it. Um, I think, you know, lacrosse is a, is a phenomenal sport, and I think it's starting to attract a lot higher talent of, of an athlete, whether they were playing football or basketball or really just didn't have access to lacrosse. Um, so I think the athletes that are, that are playing it has, has really improved. And I also think, you know, guys like myself that, you know, have experiences elsewhere that are bringing it back to the Lehigh Valley, whether it's from coaching or, you know, having a local club or, you know, having more resources definitely I think has helped when it comes to, you know, just having access to improving, whether you're a very high level player or you're a beginner player. Um, I think the Lehigh Valley has, has tremendous opportunities uh, way more than we had before. Um, and it's awesome to see kind of the wave start to come back in with, with college guys that, like I said, have graduated and are coming back to, to support and also um, integrate back in and, and give back to the sport. That's great. That kind of leads into my next question. And so we have kind of a good mix. As you, as you probably heard, we have over 40 kids on this 5-6 team with a mix of kids that have been playing for seven years and kids that have been playing for seven weeks. Um, and I wanted to talk to you and get your thoughts on the importance of club play when you're looking for long-term success in the game. In, in what I've seen, and you've coached at multiple high schools now, 
kids that really hope to play at the high school level, how many of those kids are playing at the high school level that have not dove into the club play? Is it, is it, how important is that club play to these kids? Because we have some, we have, a, we have kids in this group right now that have played a lot of club, and we have other kids that have never stepped foot on a lacrosse field outside of March to June. So if you could talk about that for a minute, that'd be great. Yeah, that's a, that's a good question. Probably a loaded question, um, but I appreciate it. Um, the, the more you can keep your stick in your hands, obviously the better. Um, you know, playing club gives you, you know, additional resources, coaches, um, and really just more playing. For, for youth players, the, the way you really get better is, is experience. So the more you play, the, the, more, the more you can get better. Um, in my opinion, the majority of the guys at the high school level um, do play club. Um, and, you know, just, just being at Parkland, there's definitely a, a higher level of expectations, right? So a lot of those guys have been playing club and, and, and a lot of the younger guys that are coming up do. Um, but with that being said, it's definitely – and, you know, being both sides, being a club director and not, um, it's definitely something something that's not mandatory. Um, there's kids that mature later. Um, there's kids that come on and, and start the sport later, um, you know, that can fit into a role um, that, that the team needs. Whereas, um, you know, a player that started really young and, you know, is starting to get burned out. So there's, there's definitely two sides of it. Um, but from my experience, the majority of our players at Parkland do play club and, and you can definitely tell, um, you can definitely tell uh, the skill levels that, that do um, versus the ones that don't. Awesome. Thanks. Coach so Kevin. I, back yeah. So while the kids are still thinking about uh, some additional questions to ask Coach Bender, <laughs> I was curious, you know, what are some of the things you're doing with, uh, with your team right now, Coach, to keep the Parkland, Varsity, and JV teams engaged and uh, staying in shape and working out, you know, between now and the time that we're going to be able to get back on the field? Yeah, so obviously it's a pretty uneasy time. Um, so we, we continue to Zoom with them. We Zoom with the seniors. Um, you know, we try to just stay in as con constant contact with them especially in the beginning as, as a lot of it was unknown. Um, so trying to be that figurehead and give them, you know, some promise and, and some direction um, was definitely, was definitely tough, but uh, just keeping in constant communication. Um, to be honest, we've, we've really stepped away the last two or three weeks um, to give them some time off, spend some time with their family. And, and uh, I know they're definitely keeping a stick in their hands. And I know this time off will definitely benefit them. Um, like I said, a lot of those guys are playing clubs, so they'll be playing soon enough. But uh, we do have huddles, so there's film that is available for those guys to, to watch and, and to make highlight films on their time off. Um, but other than that, I mean, the last week or two, we've I've really been focusing on, uh, on our seniors and making sure that they get the recognition that they deserve, um, you know, whether that's – you know, doing a video for them or just reaching out or shooting them a text and making sure, you know, that we're thinking about them and we support them. <coughs> and, and like I said, showing them the respect and the, and the recognition that they deserve, you know, a lot of hard work and for everyone on our team was, was put in in the off season for this spring season. So right. um, it's definitely tough. Um, definitely tough. I mean, it's tough for all of us, but um, you know, we're still, still, uh, Still working on it. Still, uh, still have my playbook out. Still, you know, adjusting a few things here and there. Looking at how the roster is going to shape up for next year. Looking about how, you know, where who needs to put in some work in the off season and and what our plan is and how we're going to approach the the winter season and what events we're going to do and what team building events that we're going to do and you know, all these guys you know have spent so much time with each other the last couple springs. So it's. Uh, it's definitely an uneasy feeling not being around each other, but I think the time off is, is also, is also it's healthy. Yeah. You need to recoup, um, yeah. you know, because of the, you know, back when you were being recruited in, in high school, I would imagine, you know, again, we can start recruiting you in eighth grade. Um, 
things changed uh, over the last couple of years and now people can only recruit starting September 1st of your junior year. I, I was curious, you know, what kind of feedback are you getting from your players around that recruitment window and the impact that this most recent situation is going to have actually on their recruitment or their ability to be considered by coaches? You know, what kind of messaging are you giving to those, those players? What kind of outreach are you doing perhaps to some other coaches? Can you tell us a little bit about kind of the recruiting trail at the moment? And Kevin, that's a great question, especially with uh, Coach Lucas on the line here as a junior who missed his season. <laughs> well, he still needs to start that charity we talked about, and I know you can hear me right now. But anyways. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, ahead, I mean, there's a, that's definitely a, a sticky situation, and I can give you my opinion on, on a handful of things. Um, when I was going through the recruiting process, eighth graders were getting recruited and, and handpicked, and um, it was definitely definitely benefited a, a very small percentage of the lacrosse community um, and made it very political. Um, talking with college coaches now, um, I think the f initial reaction was, um, you know, they didn't like it. It was uncomfortable. It was new. It's going to make things harder, and it's definitely harder now. But I think in the I think in the long term, it's definitely going to make things a lot more streamlined, and uh, and a lot more fair. Um, there's still regulations like uh, military academies can still recruit earlier and all that stuff, yeah. but um, it's a lot more fair and it keeps it uh, a lot less political. Um, when I was at Maryland, I was 24 years old, maybe 23, and there was eighth graders coming in for official visits. Um, and it just blew my mind, right? There's, there's so much development that needs to be made. Um, and, and because of that, you're going to see a lot more of, you know, transfers or decommits because of it. Um, I know there's still a couple guys that committed when they were in eighth grade that are still, you know, going through that process right now. And I think it definitely alleviates a lot of, a lot of things, um, when you're, I mean, my, my opinion is, you know, when you're that young, you're picking your favorite team or your favorite colors or your favorite uniforms, or, you know, you have no idea what your future holds as <laughs> regards to majors and, you know, if that coach is going to be there or, you know, what the future plans are for, uh, for athletics, for that university. And, um, you know, like I said, for the small percentage, it, it benefited them. They can get in, they can get locked in. But at that same point, you know, there's guys working double S hard where they're committed. So, um, and then you also have to take into account the late bloomers, right? Juniors, seniors that, that, you know, start to develop or came to the sport late um, that might end up being uh, a better athlete than those guys that committed earlier on um, that are still learning and developing from that sport. Um, so, I mean, as of recent, the college coaches that I've talked to is all, all positive. It is, does make for a tough, um, a tougher couple of weeks when that September 1st thing hits because um, everyone kind of has their board and, you know, a lot of guys are still, you're still in communication with those guys and their club coaches. So there's still ways around it. Um, but there's still a lot of unknown, um, but NCAA football does it. And I definitely think it's, I think it's the right decision. Uh, long -term. Yeah. Great. So other questions, guys. Coach Chris. Yes. Hey, Hey coach Bender. How are you? How's it going? It's going. I preach this every week to the boys, academics. How do you – okay, well, I'll take you into two different forms, what we're dealing with now and, and under normal circumstances. How do you keep your team focused on academics outside of the game? Uh, during, during just like the regular school year, or during the spring school year, or just in general? Well, kind of under normal circumstances and then uh, under these circumstances. How do you keep these kids focused on academics? Yeah, I mean, that's, a, that's one thing that's, that's a lot bigger than lacrosse or, or sports, right? Uh, you, can't, you can't really go anywhere without, without being educated, whether it's going to college or really in life. Um, and that's kind of the right. things that you kind of take a step back in and, and really focus on. And that's what I try to relate to our players at the high school level. Um, and I definitely try and hold them accountable. Um, I know we have a couple study hall sessions and, you know, I'm in constant communication with their, with their counselor. Oh, okay. Someone fa falls underneath a line and, and, and what have you, or, or needs support or needs help, whether it's, um, you know, or counseling or, or tutors or something like that. 
Um, so we're able to provide that stuff, which is, which is a great um, access. But then there's also the contrary to that is when you don't, when you aren't up to your grades or you, uh, or you fall short in one class or you don't take school seriously, um, we don't let you play. Um, there's guys that are academically ineligible, whether it's from a coaching standpoint um, with our guidelines. Okay. And if we think that you're not taking school seriously or, or what have you, you know, we'll, we'll tell you you can't play this game. Or, and there's also the, the school district that says, you know, you need to be passing a certain amount of courses or you physically can't play, um, which get passes down to me. Um, and that puts our team in an unfortunate situation. So my goal, obviously, is, is to win games and, and to make for a positive experience, but to also set up these guys to, for life after lacrosse. So making sure that academics are, are important and, and, and we're making sure that they're on top of it is, is definitely, uh, definitely a key aspect. But during these times, I mean, we're fortunate to have Coach Andrews, who's actually a gym teacher at the high school. So um, he keeps us up to date, um, making sure all the guys are, are doing their stuff and nice. um, you know, can give them some resources if they don't have it um, or need help or, if someone's struggling, he kind of communicates that to me and we reach out and you know, share resources together. Um, but a lot of the stuff's online. So, um, yeah. at this point, you know, it's, you got to trust, trust the guys. And, you know, if they don't take care of business off the field, you know, those repercussions will come on the field. So. Correct. Thank you. Yeah. So, so maybe one last question, you know, before we wrap it up, um, you know, there's a couple of guys here whose parents have been reaching out regarding club lacrosse for the summer. So just wanted to, to see uh, with the Headstrong organization, do you still have any available slots for the 2026 or for the 2027 teams? Good question. Yeah. Um, as a matter of fact, we do. Um, if you're interested, reach out to us and, uh, and we'll talk, and I'll talk to you guys uh, about getting an evaluation or getting some feedback on them, but we would love to have you. Um, and the club season as of right now is still, still going on. So um, obviously you missed the spring. So it's an awesome opportunity to get a stick in your hands and, and play with a lot of the guys that I see on here. So um, it's only, uh, only a positive. If you, have, if you have any questions, yeah, absolutely. Feel free to reach out. Um, like I said, the more, more opportunities to play, the better. Um, so, yeah. Perfect. Coach, no, uh, can you uh, send out contact information in your next communication for Coach Bender and his organization? Well, we could do that. Or uh, <laughs> Coach Bender, if you wanted to, people can just reach out to me directly, and then I'll just refer them right, to, right directly to you. That way we can see which kids are, are interested in playing club that you're going to be looking for feedback on and, and, and so forth. That way, again, we give you our perspective while they're at the same time reaching out to you for uh, potential tryouts and so forth. What, what would be your preference here, Mike? Um, they're, they're welcome to reach out to me or if you just share me their information and I'll, I'll be sure to follow up. All right. So uh, guys, we'll send an email out after uh, today's call. I think Rob's been recording this anyways and will be posting it on, uh, on YouTube. So uh, maybe Rob, um, since you're going to be sending out that link, do you want to just send a note to everybody and, and include Mike's contact information in that? I can do that. Yeah. I great. actually got, I got a couple questions that I came prepared with. Uh oh, <laughs> I wasn't expecting this. Okay. I got to go. I got to go. My wife's called. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So I'm going to call out a couple of these guys. Um, so I want to hear how last weekend's, uh, last week's Zoom session went with Rob Pinnell. Um, what you guys learned from that? Um, Brian Bender, is it? Yep. <laughs> that question goes out to you. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. What was the question again? What did I you learn? How was it? Yeah, it was what? good. We learned a lot about him. <laughs> <laughs> what were some of the many key... words? He wants to know what you learned, Ryan. Yeah. So, Ryan, what were some of the key messages that uh, that you learned from Rob last week? Uh, to like always like uh, keep going and keep working out and like. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. What college did he play for? Uh, I don't know. Oh, right. <laughs> oh boy. Help him out, Lucas. Easy, easy listeners. We got listeners here. Wow. So, for now, so, got it. Yeah, 
There we go. So, guys, remember, he was the 2013 Twarton Award winner. He played from, at Cornell from 2009 to 2013. Uh, actually threw a loophole for that fifth year of eligibility, by the way. But uh, fourth all-time leading scorer at Cornell. Remember, these are things we talked about, guys. So, go ahead. Pick on some other guys here, Coach. All right. Um, Charlie or Colin, tell me some, uh, some defensive drills that you guys have been working on. Oh, boy. So I know Charlie's been playing a lot of stick work in the backyard. So, oh, there's Colin's video. It, it was frozen there for a moment. Colin, why don't you go ahead and start? Because I know you've got a goal in your backyard. What kind of stuff are you working on? Um, wall ball and shooting. Okay. That's it. Those are defensive drills. Stick <laughs> 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 Charlie. How about you, Charlie? Eh, same as Connor. Every once in a while, I play with my little brother. Play against my little brother. All right. Well, I got to I got to drop that video that I talked about last week here, guys. So I've got a a 28 minute video. I'm not sure you guys want to watch a full 28 minutes of it, but uh, a whole host of drills you can be doing in your backyards, you know, with your parents, whether they play lacrosse or not. Um, so again, I'll drop that this this uh, this coming week here, guys, and, and hopefully at least on the Defensive side or stick work side, you guys have a couple of additional things you can work on. But, uh, but again, you've got to have a stick in your hand here, guys. And Matt Kelly, stop playing basketball. So, Coach Ben, you ought to just, cut, you ought to just call on my kid just for the sake of it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, last question. Ethan, what, what, uh, what stick you been playing with during this quarantine? I've been playing with, like, both. Both, nice. Just like cradling and throwing it like anywhere and just running to get it. Nice. You throw it with one stick and then go get it with the other stick? <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Oh, it's good that again you're keeping both full sticks in your hand because uh, again he's one of those uh, athletes that can play a variety of different positions. Last question: Is anyone uh, is anyone practicing their face off so they can beat Bailey? Absolutely. I know Matt's doing it with his long pole. I practice. <laughs> practice. Anybody else? There are other face off guys in on here, right? Chase isn't on here. Bailey's no, working just not. to be able to beat Chase. Yeah. yeah. No, no, Chase isn't here. No, Luke. Chase is at Bailey's. I think, Rob's, I think Rob's working out too, just to beat Bailey. I'm, I'm working out to beat Bailey. <laughs> <laughs> hey guys um coach do you want to call anybody out that's it that's all i got hey guys so i sat down real quick i just want to add something before we let you guys go tonight um obviously we have more time to catch up on movies and film and one of the things that that rob pinnell talked about last week and it echoed things that we've been talking about is the importance of watching lacrosse watching lacrosse as much as you can Every game you could possibly imagine is out there on YouTube. Every game you could possibly imagine. You can find it somewhere in today's day and age of technology. But uh, me and the family, we sat down and watched a film um, just the other night, and it, it was so much better and so much more. Medicine game? Yeah. It was, it was amazing. So was good it's on Amazon, guys. <laughs> Amazon. It's called The Medicine Game. It's about the Thompson brothers, the Thompson family. Um, and it, it just was phenomenal. And then if immediately following that game or that, that video, that movie, which is a true story of their life, and the Thompson brothers, if you – Coach Bender, I'm sure will attest this, are some of the greatest lacrosse players that ever touched a field. And the fact that the brothers can all play is, is just mind-boggling. All four are currently in the NLL, three of them on one team. They're, they're two of them won the e Twarton. On this one team. What's that, Kevin? I was saying two of them won the e Twarton, and one of them actually won the Twarton two years in a row. Right, but yeah. what, what I thought was a really neat lesson about yeah. that was the importance of education. As good a lacrosse player as these guys were, they struggled to get to their school. Their, the oldest two brothers really had issues getting into college and one even finishing. So – I, I highly recommend you guys watch the medicine game. And then what we did immediately following that was we watched a YouTube video called the greatest lacrosse game ever, 
which was the game Coach Bender. Which get which which game am I referring to? Do you know? I do not know. It, it was the game between Albany and Notre Dame, and there were actually three Thompsons, two brothers and a cousin, on that Albany team at the same time when they went up against Notre Dame, and it was a back and forth game. So we, if you have two hours to kill, guys, because that YouTube video is only twelve minutes long. Watch the medicine game. And then watch the greatest lacrosse game ever on YouTube. It'll be well worth your time. And if you don't come out of that wanting to grab your stick and get in the backyard and work, you were sleeping during the movie, honestly. So that's all I have for you guys today. You all know what I say every day. Oh, yeah. Stick should not be gathering any dust. Go ahead, Coach. <laughs> well, at least you're not talking about personal hygiene again. So. No, not today. Not today. <laughs> I can no, but... smell some of these kids right through the camera, though. Yeah, they've, well, some of them haven't showered in two months. But. Especially that Matt Kelly kid. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, Coach Bender, on behalf of the team, you know, again, thank you very much for, uh, for joining us here tonight. Um, you know, this is, guys, this is, again, another great opportunity. You know, within the Lehigh Valley, you know, Mike, Coach Bender is, is one of the preeminent guys. Uh, you got to know. Uh, if you're thinking about playing club, he's also a guy you got to know. Uh, so it was a great opportunity for us to, uh, to have – you know, a great coach and a great player, a local product uh, here for you guys to, uh, to ask some questions to. And uh, again, we're going to continue to invite uh, more coaches and players uh, as we uh, continue to get through the month of May. Um, but, uh, but again, Rob will send out a copy of this uh, video tomorrow. We'll send out a copy, or I should say, of uh, Coach Bender's contact information. So if you guys aren't playing club now and you're looking to get in and start playing club, and I know there's a couple of you guys here, you know, the, the, the moment we brought this up, your eyes kind of raised. So Ian, make sure you tell Mr. Wilson about this. Uh, you know, guys, there's an opportunity to play club in the Lehigh Valley. Headstrong is a great organization to be a part of. It's got a, um, a great, great um, vision and um, really purpose in terms of um, uh, as an organization with cancer research and, and, and support for families going through uh, difficult situations. So uh, again, if you're looking for an opportunity, it's a great one in your backyard that you should be looking at. So with that, Coach Bender, thank you very much again. Guys, enjoy your week. Have a great week. Do your homework. And uh, we'll see you guys again soon. Thanks, Bye. Coach Bender. Thanks, guys. Bye, Bye everyone. Guys. Adios. 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 Bye. Be safe, guys. Take care of your families. Go get your bounces Bye. in. I got a bunch of goofballs. <laughs>